I'm Eric Maso with NewShooter.com. We are at IBC 2018, and I'm at the Deity booth with Andrew. What's going on, buddy? Hey, it's been a great show. It's been crazy busy. Uh, we just announced brand new products, and uh, I'm kind of excited to share them with you guys. Let's do it. We have a, it looks like a new wireless system here. New wireless microphone system. We started development of this in June, and we now have prototypes shown here at IBC. Um, it's a dual transmitter system, so you actually have two transmitters and a single receiver with the dual radios inside. Uh, each radio receiver inside this unit actually has two antennas, two internal, two external for a quad antenna setup. So we actually have true diversity on this unit. And when you talk about, you said four antennas total, we, we see two, yeah. but there's two right here in the, underneath there's here? There's two dipole uh, PCB antennas internally on the horizontal plane. So if you actually take your transmitter and put it on the actor sideways, you're still covered. You don't necessarily need to do one of these. You can set it up still like that in case the actor moves and kind of moves around on the horizontal, you're still covered. Now, does it have an internal battery? It does have an internal battery. It's a 10 hour battery life on all three units. USB quick charge for one hour. So you pop it in, even a portable battery, you pop a portable battery yeah. on there and it charges in an hour. Yeah, I mean, I'm from Los Angeles, so for me, that's just my morning commute. <laughs> exactly, and if you do like literally half an hour, you got a, Five hours, basically, you of power. You have the rest of the day. If you charge it up during lunch, you're good to go for the rest of the day. If you reduce the power from the 100 milliwatts down to 50, 25, or 10, you have more than enough for the rest of the day. Did you say these are also, the, the transmitters are also uh, internal batteries? Yeah, the transmitters are also internal batteries. Uh, it's about as thick as a deck of playing cards, but we still have a USB-C underneath. That's for charging, but also for firmware updates. There's plenty of DSP still in the unit, so we can actually come out with further f updates uh, as the unit kind of progresses with age. Talk to me a little about the uh, the, the technical aspects, uh, aspects of the wireless system. So it's, it's a gigahertz system. It's a 2.4 gigahertz system. It's actually bi-directional and 100 milliwatts. Uh, so that means all settings can be overridden at the receiver. Uh, anything from gain to low cut to um, even a high frequency boost that we added at the transmitter pack. In case your lavalier has been mounted up underneath some clothes, it often starts to sound a lot like that. We can actually get those frequencies back before it's encoded into a digital signal. All of that can be set from the receiver. So once you've put this on the talent, if you need to make any adjustments, just override them. You don't need to go and run up to the actor, mess up their wardrobe, you're good to go. Now how about setting up the frequencies? Is it simple, you have to go into menus to do so? So you go to the menu, you go into pair and pair, in both menu, you hit yes pair, yes pair, and it's paired. That's Done, it. that's it. That's it. When it comes to coordinating frequencies, it's auto-coordinated amongst the software. If you have multiple receivers, a USB-C to USB-C cable actually syncs it all up and all coordinates together. So no more having to worry about having to worry about frequencies and balancing it all out. It does it all for you. Because of the adaptive frequency hopping technology, it's only doing it for one millisecond a piece, so you must have a computer to kind of manage all that. And how about the microphones that it's capable of using? Talk to me a little about the connector. So it uses a standard wired 3.5 millimeter locking lavalier. Uh, this means a lot of the lavaliers, a lot of people already own there out there for other brands will work with us, as well as the ones that we developed for the 3.5 millimeter. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the receiver. It is a little bit bigger, but maybe that size is a little deceiving. Yeah, so the size is a little deceiving. It's almost roughly the same size as the old Electrosonics 411A. So a lot of bag users uh, who are sound mixers are used to that kind of a size. If you're a DSLR operator, you may be a little cautious. You may go, I don't know, it feels, it feels a little big. Uh, but as soon as you pick it up, it's very lightweight. It actually weighs less than my phone. So my phone is probably about the same weight as it, and it's a lot smaller. So for its size, it's actually pretty well balanced. Underneath, we have a quarter 20 and a 3 eighths. So if you're uh, a camera operator out there and you're looking for a microphone that go into your camera, you can mount this right to your cage, or you can use a hot shoe adapter and mount it right into the hot shoe. It probably weighs roughly around a lot of what the XLR adapters people are doing in mounting their DSLRs anyway. Now there's a reason why it's larger, not just because you wanted to make it bigger. There's a reason for it. Yeah, so it is larger because of the RF protection and the crosstalk between the different preamps. A lot of the smaller ones can have channel bleed. What we wanted to do was isolate the circuits on either side and also add shielding in the middle to really kind of prevent any kind of channel bleed and isolation. Because the outputs are indeed balanced 3.5 millimeter outs. So when you go to XLR, it's not just an unbalanced XLR, it's a proper balanced XLR. 
And also, again, you, you mentioned that there's not XLRs on the unit itself. It's using the smaller ones, which makes it a little bit more compact. Yeah, it makes it a little bit more compact, but also if you're a DSLR user, for you, you just take that normal auxiliary cable you're used to using for your phone or for going into your car, and you can go right in, convert it to unbalanced immediately, and plug it into a DSLR. Fantastic. So did we talk about the range a little bit? Uh, yeah, we can talk about the range. So indoors, we're looking at around 30 meters. Uh, in heavy RF and in kind of going through walls and people on set walking around you. So you're looking at around 30 meters or I guess around 100 feet. Uh, outdoor use, line of sight, perfect conditions. We're talking about 100 meters or 300 feet. Okay. And uh, what's this retail price going to be? And you said this is a, an actual more of a prototype? This is more of a prototype. Um, the retail price, we're kind of aiming for that 850 price range for two transmitters, a receiver, and two lavaliers. And when do you when do you think it'll go uh, get out there in the marketplace? <laughs> um, still kind of having to go through the whole hoops and process of that kind of stuff, but we're hoping for a winter, early spring. All right, thanks, Andrew. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. <laughs>